Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. I am your co-host, TMD. And we want to thank our main sponsor this evening. That's right, that's going to be Knox Pro Entertainment, located in Van Nuys, California. You want to find out anything in all things Knox Pro, just log on to their website, www.knoxpro.com. Big Keish, welcome back hey. to L.A. You just flew in from the East Coast. How are you feeling? Oh, man, I'm exhausted. I got in late last night on a, a flight from Pensacola, Florida. As you all know, uh, laying uh, my Uncle Sika to rest. And, uh, yeah, it, it was uh, it was a long flight, but, you know, I'm here, man. I made it. So a lot, a lot of the photos uh, from the service have yeah. uh, been circulating throughout the internets. Um, it looked like a beautiful service. I, I mean, how, how was it? It, it was, uh, it was a proper service um, uh, to send off uh, a chief, uh, a father in this clan. Uh, you know the dynasty. You know it was beautiful. Um, I. Uh, it was great to to see family, uh, not under these type of conditions, uh, but you know, we don't see each other that much. From we all live in different parts of the world, and you know, it was good to be able to lean on each other and hug each other, and did a lot of crying, and you know, did a lot of laughing, a lot of smiling, a lot of hugging, you know. So it was a it was a beautiful, uh, beautiful ceremony. Um, had uh, you know, uh, a lot of close friends that flew in from all over the world, um, and uh, you know, uh, a lot of the close, uh, some of the OGs that I haven't seen in a minute, you know, were there. Uh, you know, Tony Guerrilla was there, uh, exactly, and he showed up. Uh, mm -hmm. The garlic bread. <laughs> I, well, I didn't smell it that time, and uh, did he, you know, did he come course, up to you? Uh, yeah, but you know, I. I I, I, you know, Joey, honestly, I was kind of just numb mm -hmm. because there was so, you know, people that show respects, right? Yes, sir. They all walk up and, you know, everybody's, you know, you know, so, you know, condolences and this and that. And, you know, so it's like you see them, but, you, you know, you're kind of numb from, you're happy to see them. But then you forget, you know, until yeah. the day's over. And, you know, I seen uh, Uncle Haku was there. Oh, wow. Yeah, with his daughter, his grandson, um, you know. Uh, you saw Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman was there. The wise man was there. Was that uh, uh, the first time you've seen him in a long time in person or? Uh, yes. You know, um, it was a, a bittersweet feeling when I uh, seen um, Paul, you know. Didn't, didn't look at Paul as... Anything with the storyline or nothing like right, that, right, you know. Right, my, right. you know, you was there from, from the beginning, man, and he, here you are, You're still with it. You know what I mean? So the ties to the family with this man, you know, Paul Heyman, is uh, deeper than what it is on television. And uh, you know, so you know, big shout out to just all of them that took the time to, you know, uh, to fly out to drive out. Uh, to be able to come pay respects to uh, to Uncle Sika. And, uh, you know, I'd like to personally thank the city of uh, Pensacola, Florida. Um, man, the, the uh, you would think the, the the president is coming through Pensacola. It's a big turnout. Uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, there's, you know, I, I'm kind of in the back part of the, of the carpool and uh, just to see all these cars following the hearse, you know, it was, uh, it was, uh, you know, Sika left his, uh, his footprints there, you know, his imprints, uh, was definitely, uh, felt in the city, you know, and, and, uh, so shout out to, you know, the, uh, Pensacola Police Department, I mean, they shut down the streets and here comes Uncle and the crew, man, so it was nice to be able to show respect to, you know, to Uncle, you know, and uh, a lot of the our guys that uh, were in the police department or a lot of the guys that went to schools with uh, my twins, went to school with, you know, Sika Joe. And so, you know, they have close relationships and and ties, uh, you know, to the twins and to 
to Joe, you know, so it was nice, you know, it was nice that, you know, these boys all uh, came together for uh, paying respects um, uh, to uh, uh, to Uncle Sika, so, you know, and, you know, it, it was so freaking hot over there. I mean, uh, you know, we uh, went out to lay Uncle to rest, and, you know, we we couldn't uh, bring the islands, bring him to the islands. So we brought the islands to him, but it felt like we were in the islands, the, the, the heat. Oh, my God. Yeah, we so you imagine we get out there and lay him to rest, and, you know, uh, my cousins Vanessa and Summer and Maritza, you know, all the siblings and Joe's siblings, you know, they did a tremendous job. They, they had a fire dance guy there. Really? So you're doing a fire it's dance. Like a luau almost. Yeah, well, you know, it's a celebration, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, uh, and then they had drums over there, you know, the pake and, you know, what you what you would see in a luau, you know, a crew out there jamming out there. You even did a little dancing. I saw some footage. Yeah, uh, well, that, that was toward, yeah, that right there was towards the, of the reception. And people were and throwing I, the money up? Yeah. And, and, and I'll get to that, uh, you know, explain to that. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, so we, uh, you know, he had the, you know, he had the fire dance and, you know, the guy did a tremendous job, you know, coming out there and, you know, with the fire. You remember, it's like 99 degrees out there. And on top of that, while you're twirling this stick with fire, mm -hmm. you know, with, uh, it's just even, you can imagine that kid is just, freaking hot but i was like i hope you don't drop that day you know you know <laughs> but he he did you know they hired professionals did his thing. and uh you know it was beautiful and then uh you know the family invited everybody to uh uh to get together for the reception and uh we walked into the reception i'm sure a lot of people had seen the a few shots from out there and uh it was a beautiful just a beautiful uh, reception it was very nice on the golf course um, you know, Roman and, you know, family and we spared no expense. You know, it was like, I thought I was walking to a presidential ball, wow. you know, and, yeah, you know what I mean? And the, you know, the staff there at the Benscola golf course were amazing. Uh, the bartenders, man, he made the best, uh, old fashioned. No way. Yeah. So I had my old fashioned. And uh, you know that's that's our time to, because that's like the last part of the, of the event for Uncle Sika's celebration, and then the following day everybody's leaving. So, we turned up. You know, we did our you know Kawalunga and, you know where you know Joe comes in or, uh, one of the kids of uh, Uncle Sika, come in and it's uh, a proper it's a Samoan dance where. You know, we show respect to them, right? And so we throw up money. It's not like they need money mm -hmm. or we need money. It's just, it's just been the culture to throw up dollar bills or $20 bills, whatever you, you want to throw up. But And so, and then the dance, you know, some of the of the videos that leaked out there, you know, showing uh, me and Joe uh, dancing. I was trying to keep up because I, I haven't got up and felt like doing 45 minutes cardio in there. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. my knees were burning, and so you can see on a video, like, it's just my wrist start moving. That was it. That was the only thing working on my body was my wrist. But it it was that, you know, it's, um, mm -hmm. you know, set the record st straight, you know. Uh, some people that, you know, they uh, were talking, like, well, why are, we, why are we smiling and dancing when you lose the loved one? Well, it's, uh, in our culture, it's a celebration, celebration of because... You know, keep in mind, uh, Samoan people in Polynesia were very uh, uh, faith type of people, you know, in, in church and stuff. And so we, you know, were happy that, you know, to know that Sika is in heaven and, yeah. you know, we're celebrating his life and his, you know, his uh, entry into the heavens above, you know. And so that was it, you know, the dances and stuff. And then. Uh, after we did the Samoan dances, she we were out there doing an the electric slide, <laughs> you know, and the, the more damn old fashioned I was drinking, you know, man, yeah, that so sounds I, like a good I time. got a chance to, we got a chance just to, just to, you know, just to chill, you know what I mean, 
it's nice to not be in the you know public eye and stuff right. when you know to be able to see you know uh you know my son's there and jimmy was there and black pearl was there you know big sam move he was there tk all day Man. TK was the life of the party, my yeah. man. Oh my god, he always is. You know TK, yes sir. Yes and sir. you know TK brought the he he, uh, he turned uh, a room from just you know morning into you know just laughing and being so happy because you know TK was sick as boy. And keep in mind, Matt was just a baby when he's born, and TK just got off the Greyhound from San Francisco into he comes into auntie lisa and uncle sika's house with the baby of that you know the world knows him at rosie but matt right and so you know the sisters wasn't even born really yet and so you can imagine you know when auntie lisa you know seeing tk you know she told me man junior i needed that wow i needed that laugh so much and tk just you know yeah, she knows how TK is. And, you know, TK haven't seen her in a while. She haven't seen TK in a while. So it was a ce like celebration, a reunion, yeah. reunion on so many levels. So, you know, thank you to everyone. Thank you, everyone that showed up. I know it wasn't, you know, uh, wasn't easy. You know, I damn near, you know, flights were delayed all the time coming from the L.A. to, to that away. And, and, you know, Pensacola Airport is so small. And so we're getting ready to leave. The next morning, we're like, huh. I don't want to say hungover. It's just we didn't get enough sleep. Okay. Right? And now you got to pack your bags. You got to get ready to leave back. Mm -hmm. It's back to the grind, it's Joey. Like on the you road. know me. I'm, <laughs> I'm certain I'm looking. My notifications go off. Uh, mm -hmm. It's time for me to get back and do blah, 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 my mm -hmm. scheduling. And we go to leave, and, and the flights, the hurricane hits Texas. Yeah. So when the hurricanes hit Texas... Almost half of the family members that flew there were connecting through Texas. Oh, no. So now flights are delayed, then canceled. Wow. Now we're having a... So we're dealing with the travel situation, but we were upset, but we weren't upset because it gives us an extra day to hang out and yeah. stuff. And so as soon as I found out my flight was delayed and canceled... I went to Buffalo Wild Wings like we did in Lodi. <laughs> yeah. I called the whole family. I said, uh, hey, and I went there because I know that they make a good old-fashioned. Uh-huh. And guess what? Was They so sure did make a good one. All right. They delivered. They delivered, man. So nice. it was a good, it was a good day, you know, good uh, ceremony. And, uh, you know, everybody was happy to see each other. Now it's uh, back to what the Anawais does and... The Fatu does, and it's back to life, grind. back to grind, you know. So, but I'm happy to be back home to LA. And, and it, it's always a pleasure to see you. Um, you know what? Uh, we have a, a caller on hold. Oh, we do. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I believe that's going to be Donisha. Denisha. Denisha. Shout out to Denisha. That's right, Denisha. How are you? Please tell us where you're from and state your question. Mm. What was your favorite thing about the Wild Simone? Um, man, uh, was being, uh, being trained by them underneath the, uh, the, the tree of professional wrestling, um, and, uh, of the traveling part, uh, to be able to spend time with my uncles and, uh, teaching me on the road, uh, getting to see a lot of different parts of, uh, the country and the cities, the new cities that I've, I've never been to. So, yeah, I'd have to say that. All right, all right. Okay, thank right, you, thank Donisha. You. Appreciate the phone call and uh, keep tuning in to Off the Top with Rikishi Fat too. So this, yeah, well, this is cool. People get to call in real yeah. time and and talk to you, WWE Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna keep it rolling. We got David from Sacktown calling in. David, how you doing, man? Hello, how you doing, Big Keish? Hey, how you doing, David? Thank you for calling through, Mo's. Hey, hey, first off, I got to say uh, thank you again for uh, blessing Lodi with your presence at that meet and greet. It was really nice meeting you there. Thank you, sir. Um, and I'm uh, happy that you enjoyed the art that I presented for you. Um, um, my question is, I heard a, a an idea and I wanted to run it by you in regards to the bloodline and what's going on. How would you feel if Jacob Fatu was actually sent in as a mole for Roman? 
Uh, you know what? Um, that's a good question. Uh, J Jacob, he can pretty much uh, play any role that they put in, uh, in into the bloodline, uh, whether it's that, whether it's enforcer. Um, and the reason mm -hmm. reason why I say this is because, you know, I've said it before on a, a few podcasts ago, that this kid is talented. And when I say talented, uh, Jacob can pretty much do it all. Um, yeah. You know, it's a good question because, you know, if in case that happens or they, the, an idea comes through, you know, WWE yeah. uh, creating uh, creative control uh, uh, that are writing, the, uh, you know, all the uh, the angles for them. It, it it won't it won't be a flop I don't think because you know we all know what type of talent that Jacob is man he he's a he's a beast and he's one of those kids that like I said before in order to get the best out of Jacob Fatu you got to mm -hmm. put Jacob Fatu with the best out there to be able to see him do his best like Jacob can't be with just a mid carter he can't, you know, the only thing you're going to see with him with a mid-carter is just doing just, a, you know, a regular job where the mid-carter just pretty much just there for him to be a puppet, right? But uh, you want to see the work ethic of Jacob. You want to see his psychology inside the ring. And, in, and that can be tested and seen worldwide against a veteran like Randy Orton or Cody Rhodes. Right. Yeah, so... Yeah. Day one, he was, like, amazing with the debut. I think that was perfect. Yeah. And then at the pay-per-view, the no-sell of the DDT, he just popped yeah. back up. I was like, that's the superior Samoan I know. Yes, sir. That's the nickname I, I like to call him. All right. And, and okay. Game changer. All right, my brother. Thank you for taking my question. Right on, David. Hey, man, thank you for calling. And keep tuning in to Off the Top with the Kishu Fatu. Thanks, brother. Yeah, All right, man. He can pretty much do it. You know, Jacob can pretty yes, much... He can. I mean, you you seen that? I seen that when he didn't uh, sell the DDT. Yeah, we popped, popped up. Popped off right of back there, up. Right? They're building them. So let's talk yeah. about Money in the Bank. So uh, Money in the yeah. Bank. Uh, 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 first of all, uh, Money in the Bank winner is Drew McIntyre. You know, a lot of us uh, were banking on the Yeet Master. You know, to, to, to somehow come through uh, and and win the Money in the Bank match, but no. Again, no Yeet. Yeah, it, I you know I that kind of hits a nerve with me. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not asking or or saying to give this kid a free pass, right? Because who he is and where he comes from. But I mean, again, I'm gonna go back to the numbers. You know, the numbers don't lie with Yeet. You know, the the merchandise that the Yeet man has done so much for the company. Yeah. Right. The Yeet man. He, he doesn't have a bad track record. The Yeet Man is not a liability. The Yeet Man shows up to work and does what he does. And you know what? 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 The only thing that comes to my mind is when, when, when you're not given a chance. But you go out there and you take it and you build it on your own. Mm -hmm. The opportunity, we're going to give you this opportunity to be a single wrestler, to be the yeet, whatever. And you look at the crowd when this kid comes out, whether it be my son or not. But you look at the crowd. You look at, you know, what his performance is. I mean, you know, okay, we got robbed the first time from what's his name with the Intercontinental Belt. Gunther. Gunther. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's my feeling. Okay, where's Gunther at now with the with the belt? Right. Where where is he? Do you see Gunther up on the on the on the marquee where you see Yeet? Right? So and now it comes to money in the bank. When you see the money in the bank uh poster, who do you see on that poster holding the money in the bank suitcase? I mean, I'm just speaking facts. I mean, if if I'm wrong, then hey, then I'm wrong. Right. But that, you know, for sure, without even talking to my boy, it's like, okay, because I don't like to know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'll look from it at a different way while I'm watching it. And for sure, I said, okay, if anything, to the next level, now, you know, this could be the one here, you know? And uh, boom, you know, here it comes again. So I just text my boy, hey, good match. 
keep working hard. I didn't want to tell him, you know, right. anything else because, you know, he's probably feeling it, and I, I'm damn sure I'm feeling it. And it's like, okay, what is it that we got to do to give ye a chance to finally, after 17 plus years, of going on 18, blood, sweat, and tears, it gave it to you all, everything, his mind, body, and soul. To be able, wouldn't you think, after all these years, to finally crown crown him and make him earn it? Because he damn sure earn it. Crown him as an intercontinental champion or whatever other champion belt they got. I think he deserves it, whether he's my son or not. All right. You know? And so we want to look at the, at the status. Yeah, let's, let's look at the numbers. You know, how much how many sweet every every time I turn on my social media to post something, in comes WWE shop. What do I see? Yeet. What do I see? Yeet hoodie. Yeet this, yeet that. And one thing that really made me proud is as I seen it on a on a on a reel on I think it was Instagram where I'm always posting. My boy came out and as he was going out, he finished his match. Did you know he took off his shoes, signed his Air Force One Yeet shoes, and threw it out one one shoe to the crowd, left side, signed the other one, threw another one out to the you know, to me that that's that was that travels impact into whoever caught that. Mm -hmm that they got a piece of history from a man that at one time today was the probably me, most popular guy out there, babyface. And then here's where I was very happy because what he done and the world has seen it through the eyes of, of TV, uh, you can imagine how he didn't realize he just gained more fans by throwing those shoes out there. Yeah. You know? So now he ribbed himself. Yeah, because he's going to do it every time now. He's got to do it every time. <laughs> so now you can write those off now. You can write those Air Force Ones <laughs> off. Oh, and, man. He better get some, like, uh, yeah, KSJ 100s yeah. or something. Well, hell, <laughs> I, here's my thought. That if you're going to give out stuff now, you make sure, because I know I buy Samson Air Force One. <laughs> Those are like two hundred something dollar shoes. Yes, right. So um, that means you're gonna have to buy two hundred dollar shoes every time, whatever house shows. Yeah, he's out there. Yeah, two hundred days out the year. You do the math. You know, yeah, right? Yeah. One hundred twenty, one hundred, two hundred dollars versus two hundred something days. Yeah, that's a lot of money, man. <laughs> hey, but it it is the memory that you're gonna leave and behind. That moment you're creating. And that moment that you're gonna create for one fan, man. That as he grows up, or he's probably going to come and say, hey, man, uh -huh. I caught your shoes 20 years ago. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm proud of my son. Uh, they had a great, great, you know, a uh, great match with, uh, you know, with uh, uh, the ladder's match that he was through. Yeah. Took a lot of good bumps. You know what I mean? I thought the men's match was fantastic. Um, everything about that match was great. You know, there is no off spot or off time when you're in a, a big build-up type of match like that. You know, Money in the Bank, that's that. You know what I mean? From Canada, yeah. I thought the girls had a great match. You know what I mean? Uh, my daughter-in-law was out there. Trin was out there doing her mm -hmm. thing. You know, Tiffany uh, was trying. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I for, I thought between the two, Joey, I thought it could be her because she's on a hot streak. You know what I mean? Uh, and again, I can imagine what her merchandise is doing. You know, it was numbers, right? Yeah. But then I also, I was like, you know, looking at uh, Trinity, I, I was like, you know, this can be either which way because, you know, Trin knows how to carry that belt. You know, she knows the responsibilities of those belts. And so, but yeah, it, it was a, it was a great, uh, the ladies match, I, I honestly felt that it was better than the men's match. Wow, there Right, it is. that's kind of, you know what I mean? But There's a bomb right there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Right, so that's what I—that was my take on that because uh, okay. I don't know. I'm just a fan for for the women in a business standpoint mm -hmm. because it's been a dominated uh, business of a male uh, 
uh, business for so many years. And it's good to see opportunities for females to get up there and showcase, you know, their skills, right? Showcase their, uh, you know, their athletic ability mm -hmm. rather than just seeing them TNA. Look beautiful. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, I get it. If you're beautiful, all oh, right, that's right. that's a bonus. Right. Right? But at the end of the day, it's what you, you do in the ring you know, by working, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, so that's what I, that was my take on it. And then, what was it, the the main event? The main event, which we're, I'm going to get to, but, yeah. you know, speaking of moments and fans, yeah. we got Jordan, and, and it's his moment right now as a fan to talk to WWE Hall of Famer Rikishi. Jordan, how are you? State where you're from and your question, please. Yes, uh, I'm from Jackson City, Missouri. And I was getting, uh, I was going to ask, I was reading online these rumors. First off, what all it was going to be with Kesey as the wise men, new wise men for Solo, or Amada as Strata. Uh, I was just giving your thoughts of what you think about all these rumors and if you feel that, uh, that it may come true or not. All right. Well, thank you for your uh, thank you for your question. Uh, thank you for calling through. Uh, you know what? Uh, I I uh, either way. Um, I think for the bloodline, you would want a wise man that's uh, that fits the uh, fits the story. I believe. Um, not to say that you know uh, Estrada. He, he was part of a manager for my brother, Umaga, and he did one hell of a job, you know. But, you know, it's a different time right now, you know. I, and I mentioned this before. If Jacob were to move out as a single, eh, then maybe, maybe, uh, right? Uh, Eric Estrada, I mean... Uh, Armando. Armando Estrada. Alejandro. But, yeah. but then it, it's like... Do we redo the Umaga thing? Because it's comedy. He's comedy. You're right. Because, you know, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, we need to get the best out of Jacob by booking him the right way. Mm. And so would I be interested? Of course I would. You know, but I'm not, you know, it just has to work, you know, for both sides. You know, I'm I'm, I'm at a, uh, a part of my life. It's like more than wrestling to me now. Um, you know, I've been there, done that for the 30-something years. You know, dedicated my life to to the professional wrestling industry of, you know, being on the road and, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, doing the thing, what I'm supposed to do out there. And I don't know, honestly, if I, if the demands of being a part of the bloodline, if in case it comes to the point where I need to be on the road a lot, then, then I'm not kind of interested because I want to be able to, you know, dedicate my life now uh, to catch up a lot of time that I've lost. And uh, again, it, to me, is my family, my granddaughters, my grandkids, you know, my kids, and to be able to, you know, uh, spend quality time for them. I like, you know, to be at their place watching them on TV, but when they come home, I can see them, like they're coming home uh, to the family, and I, I, that's the part I want to be a part of. And so, but thank you, man. Thank you for calling in. Yep. I appreciate it, but you know, keep your fingers crossed. You know, you never know when big keys might pop up. That's right. You never know. We're, we're, I'm crossing both my fingers because that would. Be I awesome. know, man. You know, you guys, you guys fuel me like this. You know, you know, from the fans to you know, and, you know, we talk about it sometimes. Like it, the the seed is planted in my head, no doubt. Mm -hmm. You know, but again, you know, Kishi's that guy now. It's like you know, it's got to work for both sides. Right. You know what I mean? My 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 time is money. I'm biased, but like I I've seen you behind the scenes, and you are that real OG that is not a a, a gimmick. That's who you are, and that's how your peers treat you. Uh, when we were in Philadelphia for WrestleMania, one of the coolest things I saw was legends all line up to come say what's up to you, and some of them were even in line waiting to talk to you. Like uh, yeah. you know, and I was just like, wow, they're showing you so much mad respect and. To me, like just like I said, the knowledge that you uh, you have and the knowledge that you kick back down to people, like there's no other there's no other person in my mind who could fill that spot. But uh, uh, speaking about Umaga, Umaga news, yeah, uh, uh oh, big quiche, ain't it, ladies and gentlemen? Y'all get ready, hot off the press, <laughs> baby cakes. Come on. 
We have got uh, Umaga's Funko Pop available, and it's an exclusive. Uh. What kind of exclusive is it? Fanatics exclusive, available only at wweshop.com. Hey, uh, man, drop bombs on that one, boy. So Look at that. Big Keish, I got to ask you, how's it feel to see your brother Umaga get his Funko Pop? Oh, man, we still right. This is awesome. This is... Uh, they 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 didn't miss no uh, nothing by putting this thing together. It looks like him. Yeah, it's it's a cool Funko Pop. If you guys can see it, I love the red on there. That just he gonna got ask the you. tights yeah, on yeah, there. Yeah, and you know what? Look, I mean, he, my brother's gone, but he's not gone. You know, it's good to see fanatics WWE. You know, uh, pay respects to you know to uh, a legend. Uh, you know, future Hall of Famer. I keep saying. A future Hall of Famer. And Absolutely. To be able to have his Funko Pop now, you know, now I can play with both of us now. Both of us. <laughs> wait, we, wait, can, we can have both of our Funko so Pops are you, together. Are you saying that you play with yourself? Uh, no, well, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I play with the Funko Pops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it is one cool Funko Pop. So make sure you go out there and you check it out. You know, go ahead and order your Funko Pops. Uh, it's uh, what, WWE.shop.com. And uh, get your get yourself some history, man. You know, if you get it, man, go go. Uh, you know, I would think you guys would want his son Zilla Fatu uh, to sign it because that's going to be the next close thing. And then, of course, you know the bloodline members. So wow. definitely get his Funko Pop, bring it to me, and I'll sign it for y'all and and uh, have a part of history. This is awesome, man. Really love that, man. That looks great. Yeah, that 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 is awesome. Um, so going back to the Money in the Bank man event in yeah. Canada. So yes, it was the Bloodline. It was Jacob Fatu's debut match in the WWE, uh, teaming up with Tama uh, Tonga and of course Sola Sokoa, uh, taking on the team of Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes, and Kevin Owens. That is one hell of a main event. And of course, the Bloodline prevailed. Jacob's debut match in WWE in Canada. Mm. Um, so, uh, what did you, what did you think of the match? Were you able to see it? I think it was a great match. Um, I think, uh, you know, it was very, very ballsy to put those guys at the last part of this money in the bank pay-per-view, you know, when you're trying to follow, you know, these, uh, two ladder matches that were out there, you know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, it's a, it's a very, uh, 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 if he booking to me, right? But you know, this is where you can trust the talent that's that's carrying that ball, and you got nothing but professionals as far as on, uh, you know, with Randy Orton and and uh, Cody. I kind of see Randy as the OG kind of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, guiding that match there, and uh, together with, uh, of course, with you know Jacob and you know the Bloodline, the whole Bloodline with Solo and Tama and and Tangaloa. And so, you know, uh, um, I thought it was a, uh, uh, to me, I would probably, one out of 10, I'd, I'd say it was probably an eight. Okay. You know what I mean? It's just, there's, uh, um, you know, some parts in there, I kind of see that, you know, uh, the timing of certain things, you know what I mean? Could I would have liked to see Jacob, you know, I talked, I would like to see Jacob, uh, you know, kind of, kind of do some of the moves that, we know he can do, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And and keep in mind, I get it. It was Jacob's first debut, you know, and when you first debut and you're working with these three pros out there, you're looking across, you know, you know your cousin Sefer, you've always worked with him. And then you're getting the feel of, you know, the Japan type of vibe, the, the, how uh, Tamatonga works, you know, and how his brother Toa, you know. And so, you know, I would have loved to see Jake just... Uh, kind of just get in his element. Mm. Like, just be Jacob. Be Jacob. Do what Jacob does. The reason why Jacob had WWE's lenses on him for a long time. And, I, you know, you know, talking to, to Jacob, you know, he kind of got the, you know, the, the, the suggestions that his uncle, because at the end of the day, I still want him to find it on his own. Mm -hmm. And you know that, so he. But he was just a. Uh, he was more so just uh, you know happy, you know to come out and it's like you're walking with your cousins and it was that moment. Like I'm talking to him about the match, but it was that moment, that family moment, 
just walking down the aisle with, you know, the bloodline and looking around and with 30, 40,000 people in the house. And it, it was that feeling there. And I said, okay, that feeling is great, but go to work. Do what Jacob does. You know, you, when he came and did that whisper in the wind at the end of the match, right. you can hear the pop. Mm-hmm. But I don't think Jacob realized that he has fans that have been following him for a while. And when they see that, that's the Jacob what is that's the Jacob who he knows. Right. Because you can hear how the fans popped when Jacob did that. You, you never really see a, a big Samoan, uh, you know, besides the Usos and you know and the tag teams and stuff like that. But you never really see a guy Jacob's life size like that, you know. I mean Jacob, he lost weight. He looks great now. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for those of y'all that have been, you know, riding with Jacob, Jacob at one time was 260 or heavier. Mm-hmm. I wanted, and I say, you drop that weight, man, you know, or not stop doing those flips because I was concerned about his knees. And, right. But, yeah, and, and that was the, I think that was impressive for the fans on the Indies to see a 260-pound guy move and flip like that like a cruiserweight right yeah so now he's at this new weight you know this is this is the time like i think once jake comfortable comfortable when his mind is comfortable yeah. and you know what i mean you know uh, uh you With know boots too he's got the boots on yeah and yeah. then keep in mind when's the last time jacob wore boots never i've never i was seen like I, I get it you know when they had me wear boots yeah it kind of threw my stepping off. It threw my timing off. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you kind of like skeptic to, you know, to run and get up on the top rope because at least when you're on the top rope barefooted, your your your, your big toe, the ropes goes between that and you have your other toe. So now it kind of gripping that, you know, like, like you know, uh, um, uh, gripping your toes on the top rope so you got that balance. But when you're up there with soles, you know, is you gotta balance balance that. You know what I mean. And once you feel awkward, like you're, then that's when your timing will go off. And I, I you know what? And because I'm talking about that with the boots, I can almost tell you, that's probably when he jumped from the going back when he jumped from the top rope off to Cody, off to the onto Cody on the on the table. That was a close call, really, because you know we never really see Jacob jump like he's done it before, but you know. No, we talk about it not with boots. And so, fans, if you're listening, those they make a big difference from a wrestler. If you're so used to wrestling with no boots, and then you're wearing boots to wrestle yeah. on your debut, <laughs> your debut, yeah, you know those shoes are brand new. They're probably just you know trying to not even broken in yet, right? So you know what it feels like wearing shoes. It does. It looks good. It feels, but it doesn't feel comfortable. You know, Rather than wearing the ones that's wore out, you know, the yep. wrestling boots. So. Yes, sir. But I thought it did a great match, you know. Hopefully they're able to uh, kind of keep that, you know, storyline uh, gone with the, going with the bloodline. And, you know, they need to be working with a lot of the top baby faces. And, uh, you know, some of you top baby faces are kind of like, you know you have your run. And you know your role when they put you in that, in that team there. You know, there's got to be the superstar, the superstar, and there's got to be the guy that takes the fall. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Just uh, do business, man. You know what I mean? Know your role. Mm-hmm. The rock says, uh-huh. the wheel turns, like I'd say. Uh-huh. You know, everybody at one time laid down for your ass. You know, now if you see a guy like, you know, you see it, they, you know, they build a new cat, you know, whether it be my nephew or somebody else, mm-hmm. you know, do business. You yeah. know what I mean? Don't don't be such a jabroni, such yeah. a a prima donna or, that yeah. you 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 don't want to you know you feel like you know you got to stay strong uh, because you know you were strong with who and who and who. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's the past. You know what I mean? But if you if you if you're not uh, thinking business and want to you know help the next player coming through, you know whether it be my nephew, whether it be. Whoever, anybody else, you know, you you got to understand business of professional wrestling. You know, you didn't you didn't get popular in that ring by yourself. Right. You know, a lot of people took your finishes, yep. and I hope people that help build you, you know, hear me out. I hope people that help build you in the past 
that you were nice to those people. At least buy them a dinner, a steak, or whatever. You know, they, they can, can buy, buy their own food, but it's just that kind gesture that that tells you right there that you know if if you your your uh, actions are like that, that tells you you were trained properly. You understand the business in and out of the ring, uh, because you know I thought I can't say you guys always remember you Samoan before you're a wrestler. Mm. Now, if you ever have a problem like that and you get in the ring and they try to, you know, like, you know, for somebody, like we, we've seen me and Sammy done this many times. We go to get our stuff on somebody. These guys don't sell. You've seen it. We kick them right in the face out of nowhere. Knocked out. Grab the person, pull or let. So what I'm saying is we can either work or we can shoot. However you want to do it. It's easier to work with us, though. Mm-hmm. Because if you're talking about going head up with a Samoan in there or Tongan, hey, come on now. Give me a bad day. You know who the Tonga Laws and, you know, Thomas' father is. Mm-hmm. You're talking about the most vicious man in it. You know, you know who, who you know, uh, Joe's father, Sika. Uh, come on. You know, we, we, I've told these stories before, man. We were, they were rough on us and to be able to teach us the business part and to teach us to stand up. Right. We're not a we're not just a prop body for you just to, you know, to abuse our body. And, you know, if you don't know how to how to work, get your ass back out the ring, go someplace and learn how to work. Go back to the uh, to the center, you know, but I'm not going to be that that prop body for you to come practice on me and and whatever in front of, you know, millions of people. Now nah, you got me. F- up, man. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So if anybody. Anybody that you guys are out there in the ring and doing the thing, man, you know, it works both ways, my man. Yeah. You know, you guys you guys got to protect protect yourself, protect each other. And because, you know, without us two dancing together, there is no match. Right. That one sports entertainment. Remember that shit. It's called sports entertainment. It's not called, you know, sports MMA for right. in the wrestling arena. Right. So that's that's my that's my advice I'm going to leave for a lot of these wrestlers that are out there that don't get it. Yep. Uh, and there's a lot. So go ahead. Wrapping up with the yeah. money in the bank. So it looks like Jacob Fatu has got uh, speaking of his move set. It looks like he's got a new finish. Mm-hmm. And his finish that he hit dead center of the ring was, yeah. of course, the Impaler DDT. Hey, shout out to the Vampire Warrior. You saw that. That's Gang right. Grill. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, man, he nailed it. And I talked to David about it. Beautiful. David was very happy, very proud. Yeah. And he said he couldn't have did a better job doing it. So he's very honored that uh, J- Jacob is hitting the, the DDT uh which they call it implant DDT, but I just thought that was awesome. So he's using that as his finish yeah. going forward. Yeah. Um, and also, Make sure you send Uncle David uh, uh, some residuals for using his moves, <laughs> Jacob. All right. At least buy Uncle some uh, a steak every time you see him. <laughs> yeah, he he did it. He he nailed it, he man. He nailed it. He nailed yeah, it. I was so happy to see that, yes, you know, because I was wondering, well, okay, what type of finish is he yep, going to do? Yep. You know, and that that's the first. And that's it, the first for Samoan to yes. use the impaler. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know. And uh, yeah, I, th- I thought that um, uh, I thought that he nailed it. He executed, you know, the right way. It looked it clean, yep. and, and it looked it uh, it looked effective. Yes, exactly. Right, I thought so too. Um, so that that main event was, of course, uh, another banger. But then uh, a no- more news coming out of Money in the Bank. John yeah. Cena is retiring in 2025. And I know you spent some time with John Cena in the Ruthless Aggression era. You run, oh. guys were on the road together and stuff. Uh, so I just want to talk about, uh, before we wrap up today's show, just a little bit about John Cena. What, uh, what is one of your uh, favorite memories regarding John Cena? Uh, working with John. Uh, when he first came in, he was green and they were molding him to be the guy uh, to, to be able to put the company on his shoulders. Um, you know, not only myself, but a lot of other of uh, legends that uh, help uh, uh, with John. Uh, he was a, John is a a workaholic. I remember when I first met him, you know, I gave him, I said, I'm going to give you this one word, and it's called longevity, John. Longevity. Just continue to do the work. Do everything that's asked for you. Can, you know, be like a sponge and, you know, just keep at it. You know, keep at it. Um, and he's such a, John was made for this business. 
you know, as far as uh, a corporate man, as far as the right guy to uh, be able to be the face of the company, the face in the place. And, uh, you know, you can see it. You know, he's the top make-a-wish uh, appearance guy for, you know, he's got that record, you know. And I don't think that, you know, he was, uh, when he was given those type of uh, um, uh, bookings for the company to do, I don't think he was doing it for any other reason because it was a booking, but he's just that type of person that loves people, loves kids, and loves positivity and stuff, you know? And, uh, you know, the one thing that that I always remember, John, is when we first went over to uh, to the Middle East, we went to Baghdad. I think this was seven days after they got Saddam Hussein. And so when we came there, we were flying in there, and it was hot. You know what I mean? When I'm saying hot, they just got the guy, right? And, uh, you know, when we came through, man, uh, you know, we got a chance. I got a chance to travel with this kid, and, you know, we stayed in uh, Saddam Hussein's busted-up palaces. Whoa. Yeah, there's bullet holes all in the walls. And, wow. And, uh, you know, the roster that we came through was staying in these, what we call like a studio here. It's, I mean, what we call a big palace mansion here, that was like a, a studio over there in Saddam Hussein's palace. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when we landed, dude, and, you know, to be able to, you know, see this kid grow, uh, really had a, a connection with uh, people in the service. We all did, you know, in the military, right? But he was just, you can see today and past, before he was semi-retired, not active, uh, everything was military done. Mm -hmm. Come out, he salutes to the military, the men and women of the military. And then, so, you, you, you know, you see that growing in him. Now there's like a purpose. You know, you can see this guy is dedicated to it. And then, you know, never miss work. His record was, you know, just amazing. You know, attendance uh, to his work. And uh, nice guy. I never, I, I can't tell you a day uh, traveling or, you know, outside the ring that I've seen any drama with this guy. He was the utmost professional. Um, just like I said, the face in the place. He knew his his role and he wasn't going to turn his staff for anything. Mm. And so... Yeah, I'm I'm happy that he decided, you know, in 2025 uh, to finally, you know, hang up the boots. I can't wait to see how they send John off. I hope, the, you know, which I, I, I feel is, you know, the right way to do it is to send John off with the utmost respect. Whatever ceremony that, you know, the WWE can come up with any imagined thing that you can imagine they can make it happen mm -hmm. and so i feel that a guy at his stature you know deserves he deserves to you know be sent off in a in a, a most respectful type of way and i you know i'm hope i, I hope i'm uh if i'm not there in person uh, you can rest assured i'll be damn sure watching because uh right. john cena was one of my good friends you know and yeah. it, it was a, a pleasure to work with him and it was a pleasure to watch him work with my kids as well, my boys. And, uh, you know, he's, I can only wish him the best of uh, what's the second part of his life to do, you know. And I'm, right. I'm assuming that, you know, it, uh, hell, run for president, John. Mm -hmm. Run for president, you got my vote. There, there's a rumor uh, that I heard a while back uh, that there was a, a freestyle session on, on the back of a bus with John Cena. Yeah. And you heard him freestyling mm -hmm. and uh, you presented maybe to a Stephanie McMahon or somebody, hey, look, this kid can rap and you should maybe do something with him, yada, yada. Yeah. Is that true? True. Wow. It's true. We, because uh, we were sitting in the back with, you know, Taker, Yoko, you know, we, we were always listening to rap and country music. Mm-hmm. I've never knew anything that, you know, this was when John was wearing the different outfits, you know, the matching boots with the matching tights. The neon colors uh, yeah. and stuff, yeah. Every city, you know, if it was Philadelphia, he wore, you know, Philadelphia's color. Mm -hmm. Lakers, he wore Lakers color. But anyhow, he would sit not too far from the back, you know, the back of the bus. 
And he was just out there. He had, had his earphones on, bobbing his head, and he was just writing stuff. But he was looking out the window. And then he was just writing stuff. And I, you know, came and I just jumped up right beside him. What you doing? I was, I said, oh, I was just right, Bob. Oh, you rap? I said, yeah. And so, you know, I said, give me something. He gave me a little bit. So I brought him in the back. I, I just, you know, crashed the party. And, oh, you guys got to hear John do this, blah, blah, blah. So he was like a, you know, young rookie just starting. And uh, I thought he was going to freeze up. But no, man, he came in the back and he just freestyled. Everybody he's seen in the back. You know, I believe Macho Man was there. Wow. Yeah. And then he just freestyled and called everybody's name to finish. I mean, his flow was crazy. Now, you know me, like, I'm a big hip-hop fan. Uh -huh. I said, man, this is this guy. This is this is what you need to be doing. So when we got back to TV, you know, wasn't like, you know, he, you know, he wasn't really, like, I guess, I don't know. He was, he was just kind of just kind of going with the flow. So they had a place called Magic. The magic is where they make all the props. That's what we call it, Magic, in that area. So we went in there, opened up the box where they had all kind of different, uh, you know, Props for the show, clothes. We found a jersey in a basketball jersey. Boom, we grabbed that, but he already had jean shorts on. Mm -hmm. He already had, uh, you know, Air Force uh, Nikes on. Uh, so we put the jersey on him, and then we got, like, give me a chain or something. Got a chain, and we didn't, we got a padlock. We got the padlock, put the padlock on Uzi, and then, you know, while we're doing this, I see the, the door open in the office, and that's Vince McMahon's door. And so T Stephanie and uh, Vince was in there. I think Shane was in there. So, and I just I said, told you, come on, let's go. So, so we walked in. And I said, hey, man, you guys got to hear this. You got to hear this. And then boom, John just boom, you know, threw out the freestyle in there. You know, they were, whoa, right? Because we were kind of looking for something for him. You know what I mean? He's good body, good looking guy. But the regular neon tights, yeah, it wasn't, you right. know. But so, and we were like the attitude era with gimmicks. And so there you are, you got a hip hop guy, you know, kind of uh, Eminem white boy out there, just his rap flow is just smooth. And there it is. The rest was history. You know, John Zena, John Cena was born. Then. There it is, folks. So mm -hmm. um, I, my final question to you, is because you are uh, very heavy into hip hop, done some rapping yourself. You've been Yo. listening to rap your whole life. What would you grade John Cena's freestyle uh, game with, on a one to a ten? What would you grade it? Uh, Fifteen. Wow, really, dude? I'm telling you, man. If John Cena would have just really, like, you know, really commit to really doing it like a real, real album with, you know, just just go hard at it, man, you got to hear the knowledge that this guy spits, man. Wow. You know? And so, you know, he's a, he's very, very talented. And, you know, he, he you could tell hip-hop is in his soul. You could tell that. You know, hip-hop is in his soul. He just, right off the dome, man, he'll look around and he'll just rap about whatever he's seen and so forth. But, yeah, very, very talented. So from 1 to 10, 15 for Keish. High praise from Big Keish right yes, there. Big wow. shout out to John, man. Love you, my host. I uh, hope to see you down the road, and thank you for all what you've done for the company, for the wrestling industry in general, for the world. Big Keish, you got any final words? Hey, my man, as always, it's free to be kind to one another, and always, always smart enough. And I'm out.